Today I'm going to show you how to remove the transmission off any 94 to 97 Honda Accord with the 5 speed transmission. We're going to replace the transmission. This one has a hole in the bottom of it. And we're also going to replace the clutch and the flywheel plus the axle seals for the transmission. These are the output shaft axle seals and also the rear main seal on the engine block. First thing, before even lifting the car or getting started on removing anything, see if you can get the wheel spindle nuts removed. They're a 36 millimeter. It's a lot easier when the car is still on the ground because when you're trying to spin it loose, uh, the assembly's not spinning by itself. And it just makes it a lot easier. Let me see if I can get this one taken off with just my breaker bar and my 36 millimeter. Yeah, it's really not that difficult actually. So go ahead and get both of those removed on each side. It'll make your job a lot easier uh, now than doing it when the car's off the ground. This is why we're replacing this transmission. It's a big hole in the bottom of it. It still drives in all gears and everything, but obviously it no longer holds oil. What you need to do next, you need to remove the fork. You have a 14 millimeter bolt right here and on the base of the fork. You have a 17 millimeter bolt and the reverse side is a 17 millimeter nut. Get those removed and remove the fork. Your next step is to remove the lower ball joint. It's a 17 millimeter nut on the bottom of the ball joint. And if you have a ball joint separator tool, go ahead and use that now. Get it separated. We need to get the spindle away from the lower control arm. And after you have it free, after you have it free, you should be able to separate it. And with your thumb, push out on the end of the CV axle. And this we can just kind of let hang to the side. We're gonna to need to pry out the CV axle from the half shaft right here. You can use maybe a large screwdriver. I have a pry bar that makes it really easy for me to get these out. So get this uh, CV axle removed. I was having a difficult time getting the CV shaft, CV axle separated from the half shaft. So when I went ahead, removed the four, three 14 millimeter bolts. There's one here, there's two on the top of it. It's really hard to see, but you can see where they connect to the block in there. Get all three of those removed. And then we should be able to pull the whole half shaft with the axle attached to it out of the transmission. Passenger side axle was a lot easy. Same steps, fork, ball joint, pull the axle. There is no half shaft going to the transmission. After you've completed that, start removing this stuff from the top. Disconnect your battery, remove it. Disconnect your intake. If you have an aftermarket intake, a lot easier to remove than OEM. OEM still is pretty, pretty simple to remove. Get both of those pieces removed. Next, go ahead and re remove your battery tray. Handful of 12 millimeter bolts. There's four right there. There's one on the bottom side of this bracket. You can't see it from this angle, but you'll see it when you get to it. After you have the top of the tray removed, get the starter removed. There's a 13 millimeter uh, nut there. Then just unclip the other connection. You have a 14 millimeter bolt holding the starter to the transmission. And on the bottom side, there's a 17 millimeter bolt, which connects it to the transmission as well. What I did next, I went ahead and disconnected this whole part of the wiring harness. This comes through, connects to the external coil, the distributor, um, all the sensors in the front, O2 sensor and whatnot, reverse lights, just to give me more room to work in here to get the bolts removed for the transmission, plus the mount and any of the, the cables for the getting the car into gear. So if you want to do that, by all means, uh, it's really easy to take those off. But you probably can get it without it, it just seems a little more difficult. Next, I went ahead and removed the cooling fan. I did that because you need to get to the slave cylinder. There's two 12 millimeter bolts holding the slave cylinder to the transmission. Remove those. And there's also one more 12 millimeter bolt right here. We need to get this free of the transmission, but we do not want to disconnect it. What I did next, I'm getting the shift cables removed from the top of the transmission. You're gonna see there's a cotter pin. It's gonna be on the top of this piece. And then on the other one on the side here, there's another cotter pin that I removed already. Go ahead and get both of those removed. And when you do, you'll be able to slide the shift cables away 
from the mechanism and those are good to go just leave those the way they are and this one has a little washer and it has a little cover because it looks like there's a small bearing in there i'll clean those up before i reinstall those the other one did not have it it just had this washer so go ahead and uh, get those shift cables removed next the shift cables are attached to a bracket which is attached to the top of the transmission there's three maybe you can see in there i already removed one of them there's three 12 millimeter bolts one's there there's one on this side, I'm hoping you can see it. And there's a third one still in there, which I loosened up all the way. Let me get my magnet, let me pull it out. You'll see them, they're real long. Get all three of those removed, and now the shift cables are completely free of the transmission. So when we lower the transmission, one less piece that's gonna be holding onto it. Next, remove this plate from the under the transmission on the rear side. A couple of 10 millimeter bolts. Just go ahead and take that off completely. Next, remove this, this huge beam which connects the front cross member to the rear subframe. We need to remove it. It'll give us a lot more access to the bolts uh, attached to the rear of the transmission, attaching to the T-bar, which attached to the rear motor mount. It's difficult to get in there with this in the way, so relatively easy. Three 14 millimeter bolts there, and it looks like two 17 millimeter back here. After you have that support piece removed, four 17 millimeter bolts, all right there. Get all those removed. You may want to start supporting the engine. Um, it'll probably sag a little bit after this because it's not going to be connected any longer. And the rear mount and this T-bar are what holding are what holding the trans uh, sorry the whole engine and transmission up in the rear. So maybe put a jack over here underneath the transmission. Just check on it. It may stay in place still because we do have the passenger side motor mount still attached. As I was starting to remove these, I noticed that this one was missing a bolt. There's supposed to be a bolt here that's the same as these uh, in terms of the thread pitch and size, but it's longer which connects the block to the transmission. I'll go ahead and uh, put one back in there when I do the reassembly because I have a ton of those extra, but don't forget to remove that one if this car's, if your car has never been uh, messed with before it's probably in there after having all five of those removed i realize there's one more right here which threads through to the transmission as well you'll see it it's on the back of the block it goes right through so don't forget to remove that one the next bolt you need to get removed the rear motor mount can you see in there get some of these wires out of the way there's a little 17 millimeter bolt down there we need to get that removed completely. Use a combination of extensions uh, to get it removed. We can pull that out. This is how I got it loose. Use a small ratchet, a little four inch extension, and then a short socket. And I was able to break it loose with this. And now I'll be able to reach my hand in there and get that one completely removed. Now after you have the rear bolt out of the rear motor mount, we need to remove these three. There's three bolts here which connect the bracket to the front motor mount. Essentially, we need to remove those so we can get the motor to slide down, angle down, and we can drop the transmission out. But I was looking at it, and I'm gonna remove this radius rod also. Since we already have everything removed, it's easy to get to, the two 17 millimeter bolts there. And in the front, you have another 17 millimeter. So the reason we're gonna remove this, it looks like it's gonna be in the way when we're trying to drop the transmission, and. I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for myself. So a couple more bolts isn't gonna be that difficult to remove. Next, we wanna go ahead and finish up removing all the bolts for the transmission, which made it to the block. You got one up here. You got another one down here next to the slave cylinder. There's one back in there. And I believe that is all of them. Let's go look on the other transmission real quick. Yeah, there's nothing else. There's one here. We're gonna remove that one. This one's removed already. This one right here. And there's nothing else bolting it up to the back side. So it looks like we just got those last three to remove. Last two, no, oh, three more left to remove. Next, go ahead and get your jack. Use a piece of uh, maybe two by four, four by four, whatever you have. Get the transmission supported. We need the weight of the engine and the transmission supported now. Cause what we're gonna do next, we're gonna remove uh, the passenger side engine mount. 
what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the mount from, let me see, where can I get to it? Okay, I'm gonna remove this entire assembly from the transmission itself. So, I'm gonna, I don't need to remove that one. I can remove these three 17 millimeter uh, deep sockets right here and we'll get the transmission removed. And as you can see, after I removed those three and lowered it, give me a little bit better angle to get the transmission out. And you can see it's starting to separate itself from the block. So now we need to get it uh, pulled off completely. Now I almost forgot, don't forget to remove the speedometer sensor. It's a little clip on the back of the transmission. Just need to reach in there, squeeze it, and separate that from the transmission. And there it is. A little bit of wiggling, um, pulling it out. It was a, uh, wasn't that difficult to get pried loose. I just had to make sure this kind of was trying to get caught on the rear subframe, so be careful on that. You don't want to damage that. And just make sure you had everything disconnected. Now, this is my first time removing an Accord transmission. I've done plenty of Civics and Integras, and it wasn't difficult at all. If you're attempting to do this for your first time, um, it's really not that tough if you're mechanically inclined. Um, just take your time with it. It took me maybe two hours to get the transmission removed, and I was documenting it at the same time. Just wanted to make sure I got it step by step and covered all the bases on getting it removed. Now the installation will be the reversal. And the hardest part on that is getting the transmission lifted up back onto the motor. I usually use a combination of jacks, um, maybe my engine hoist to bolt it to the top and pull it up, but I'll figure something out. Next we're going to go ahead and remove the clutch flywheel and get those both replaced with brand new parts and also do the rear main seal. Here's the old transmission and the new transmission. We may need to swap some parts over. I'm swapping over my speedometer sensor. Also the shifter cable mechanism which goes on top of the transmission. And we're going to install a new flywheel, a new exity clutch, and a rear ma new rear main seal since we're down there. I suggested it. And also I went ahead and bought both of the, these are the seals for the transmission. I'm going to pop these out and change them now. Better to do it while we're already at that point than having to go back in there and remove the axles. It's just a, much easier to do it now and it's only about 20 extra dollars for both of those seals. After removing, this is the piece which helps get the selector into gear. Take a look at this. This one's missing the head for the bolt. The new transmission is remaining on there. I'm thinking a hard shift. It just kind of sheared off, fell into the transmission. All the rotating parts probably pushed it, got stuck up against the case of the transmission. Let me see if we can look at it. May have got stuck up against the case of the transmission and the differential spinning. Just kind of pushed it out, cracked the whole casing. That's my theory, and I wouldn't doubt that's probably what happened. The clutch looked okay still. It's getting a little flat. There's not a lot of meat on each disc, but there still is some separation. But it's just good that we're replacing it anyways. This one's made in Korea. I don't know what kind of brand it is, some cheap brand. But uh, got the new one, we're gonna throw it on. Flywheel also. Next is the rear main seal. Um, really easy to remove these. Get a screwdriver. Try not to mar the edges. When you're getting in there, kind of get it, maybe pry a little bit like that. But you'll be able to get it removed. And that's essentially all that we're doing to this car today. Get that replaced, flywheel put back on, transmission reinstalled, and that completes the work on this 97 Accord. Got all the parts, my mess, everything laid out. And it's good to go. Good luck on your own. If you need any help, leave me a comment in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. One final tip. I used my engine hoist with a combination of the jack to help pry up on the transmission. That allowed me to get it lined up and I already have two bolts started. So much easier than trying to lift it with uh, just with my arms. It is so heavy that uh, it just takes a lot out of you if you're trying it that way. I did it like this first time I got it up, lined it up, slid right onto the motor, and I was really excited about that. But 
just wanted to show you how I get these on when I'm working by myself. It's a lot easier to do it that way.